Good afternoon, my viewers. Today, we are here today to present to you sandwich. For the, for the purpose of today's class, we are going to have four types of sandwich, which include egg sandwich. We are going to make use of the yolk for presentation purpose. Then we have the cheese sandwich. We have the mackerel sandwich, also known as fish sandwich. Then vegetable sandwich, that is for the vegetarian, for people that doesn't eat egg and mackerel. So, right now, we are going to start with the preparation. Very simple. But it all depends on the type of sandwich you're making. But for today, we are only using two slices of bread. So what you just need, have your two bread, you toast it, then spray with your mayonnaise. It depends on the type of spread. Some normally use mayonnaise, some normally use pesto, some use mustard. It all depends on an individual. But for the today edition, we are going to make use of mayonnaise. Then spray with your mayonnaise, add your filling on top, you cover it. You can cut, then trim the four edges of the bread for presentation purpose. But for your household, you can serve it like that. But in order to beautify it, it has to be trimmed. Then you can cut into a triangle, into four pieces, or you can make it to be a finger sandwich. Then cut into four. Finger sandwich is just like a straight. So I would like you to watch the way I will prepare a sandwich. Thanks for viewing.
also welcome the chief judge for today's cooking competition in person of Mrs. Oke. A round of applause for her. She comes from. As you can see, I don't know what is this, but it's beautiful. So I would like one of the presenter of the people that made this food to tell me what is this. Yeah, welcome to the edition of Best Niger Chef Reality TV Show Season One. And be and me, I have been my co-chef, Chef Natin, Chef Soli, Chef Okenwa, Chef Black, Chef Moga, and Chef T. So before you, we have club sandwich. That is the name. But today we are working on sandwich. And sandwich is an English word that was founded in Portugal by John Motuga in 1762. And the reason why he invented the sandwich was that's, that's, there was a day he was in a kind of a gambling with his friend so he needed something to quench his hunger so instead of him placing an order that would take him for long he just called one of the chef that please can i have a two slices of bread with a slice of ham inside from there the sandwich now from there the sandwich was then founded and we have various type of sandwich like the chicken sandwich the ham sandwich the cheese sandwich the grilled chicken sandwich the egg sandwich the seafood sandwich the vegetarian sandwich but for tonight we are only having four types of sandwich which are egg sandwich chicken uh, macro sandwich known as the fish sandwich the vegetarian sandwich that is for those that doesn't take egg and uh, macro so at least make something available for them then the lastly we have the cheese uh, cheese sandwich but tonight we're working on the yellow cheddar because we have various type of cheese but today we are working on the yellow cheddar so i would like to hand, hand over the mark to my other co contestant to brief you more about the sandwich thank you hello good evening everybody my viewers nigeria africa and the wider world i will call you people to today's edition of the niger best chef edition competition of the explorer edition so my name is chef okenwa in the mansion so historically this is sandwich which originated in the 18th century in europe so the method of preparation like i was duly in charge although this is teamwork in the preparation of the yolk sandwich which before preparation we washed our eggs we put it into water for boiling after which we peel the eggs we chop the eggs then we added our mayonnaise and the, we took uh, our, <coughs> our slice of uh, cucumber and the slice of tomatoes. I took another slice of uh, bread and joined it together to get this wonderful dish. It is not cooked, but it is easy to make. I hope all of you enjoy it and be happy for us. And um, the other side of the table, we have um, a mackerel sandwich. Mackerel is actually what we call in our modern day Titus fish. Mackerel can be made either by tuna or a normal fish. So um, uh, actually the base here is um, we had um, a slice of bread. Um, we glazed it with um, our mayonnaise. You can either use a tartar sauce or a mayonnaise. I believe everybody knows what tartar sauce is. Um, we actually made use of um, mayonnaise. Um, slices of um, cucumber and tomatoes then um, we use a little bit of butter so that's all for mackerel one of the uh, the nutritional value for this mackerel sandwich we have it is very rich in carbohydrates it is also very rich in protein it is also very rich in fiber it has vitamin c it has vitamin d and it also has vitamin b thank you i'm sure they've done so much and i'm sure you guys are happy to be part of this segment all right before we proceed to the judges i would like to ask our wonderful chef how long did it take you guys to come up with something like this okay is it 20 minutes for our viewers out there you can actually make something like this within 20 minutes all right back to our judges ma please will invite you for test Let's put our hands together for our chief judge as she comes forth.
Have a second judges. the church for group four. And our last judge for tonight is group five. Anolua Court Habitat Onya CEO Jodas Bristol, home of organic food and drink. And you know you'll be wondering why Jodas. Jodas is gotten from our Inil Shells, Chef Johnny, Chef Omar, that's me, Chef Gidusi, 
Chef Dima, Chef Ansa, and Chef Saint. And our mission is preparing healthy and affordable meals to every average citizen of the world. And our vision is to be one of the top leading Bristol in the sub-Saharan Africa and beyond. Here to my left is our HR manager. So over to you. Good evening, everyone. I am Chidima Innocence, HRM, um, Jodas Bistro. Today, I'll be telling you the procedures we followed. I'll be taking for the conference we'll be having, the Commonwealth Conference. First of all, I'll be recruiting qualified persons to take charge of that event. I will also be making sure our food and accommodations concerning what will be are taking place. I'll also make sure the environment for the program, the venue, is safe and healthy. I'll be taking charge of payments for everyone who is going to work and help us put this work together. Thank you. And our project, for, our project is feeding of ministers and its executive for the Commonwealth Summit for a period of six months. And to my right is Chef Johnny, Control and Production Manager. I am John Andrew. I am the Production and Quality Control Manager. Um, our team has come up with a plan for the next six months of which our aim is to bring the best of what we do. So first and foremost, we will be making sure that everything co coming out of a production room will be best and at its, at its best. First of all, we will ensure that every production team is well trained to make sure that there's no lapses, there's no loopholes in our preparation of food and cuisines and also the way we present it to our guests. This is a world-class event, as you all know. Um, there, there shouldn't be any errors in this. It's, it's something that will showcase us to the world. So we have to be prepared, our staff are prepared, and also we have um, measures to place down, uh, testing our food, making sure that our, our staff has the best um, training in terms of our health wise, in terms of our production. Everything should be in order. Thank you. I'm the head of operations and um, I'm here to give you a little brief of my job description. Basically, my job is to oversee all basic managerial activities of Jordan's Bistro. I'm here to oversee the direct responsibilities um, such as the operation processes, the embracing of the design and purpose or pattern of Jordan's Bistro. So I'm going to hand you over now to our business developer to enlighten us more. I run day to the activities. I make sure that I convince people, especially our customers, our clients, for them to come and patronize us. Therefore, I give them the developing relationship between us and the people that we merge in our company. I make sure that we have this common experience, this common interpersonal relationship that we can make our clients to be able to buy from us. Like this project we are about to deliver, like likewise, my, my MD, he just came back from Abuja last week ago. We are here to, he went there to convince people in the conference zone that our noble, um, our noble place and our noble company is here to give them what they want. So, therefore, we identify our new product by making things move automatically, ensuring that our noble company is going and is moving properly. Then we have a closed deal door, which is enabled the people most outside the country, both Africa, America, and so on. They are here when you have a common meeting, we have a closed door deal, which enable us to, even when after you when you go outside Nigeria, we can able to get our product at the same price. Then we have a public relationship. This thing enables us to make sure that we have a common goal between us and our clients. We have a common achievable. 
Then we have a advertisement pro product and producers. In this case, we don't normally produce, give ourselves advertisement because people who and short to our company, they don't advertise our products. For instance, in our social media, in our everywhere around the world, they are the one making us proud because we are into the world to give them what they really need from us. Then in me, I'm here to represent my able colleagues, which in my own department, we have a athletic marketing people. These people focus mostly, especially in the relationship between the organization. Why you have a brand marketing managers? These people ensure that they create awareness and identify our logo. That which means whenever I see our Jordans, you know that this is people that are working to achieve common goal in life. They have a content manager. These people are those people that have the common goal, have the product in our own full store that able, enable us to do the common things and also make sure that our con the content in our product is the, the best in town. We have a digital marketing. These people are the people that ensure that they advertise our product everywhere around the world. So I will stop here. Let me hand over the mic to our MD. I will hand it over to our finance director. Well, I am Chukam Banifo. I represent finance and strategy for Jodas International, Bristol, your home of organic food and home. Um, basically, um, we're running a project which I want to explain to us. It's a Commonwealth Nation Conference that will be held in Nigeria. That will be starting at January 2020. Um, as you all know, um, what is the Commonwealth? The Commonwealth Nations, um, it's a political association of nations, 55 member states, uh, which um, most of them former territories of the British Empire, um, 54 member states. Um, in the year 1990, Her Majesty the Queen um, established and instituted the Commonwealth Conference of Ministers. And in the year 2022, uh, Nigeria will be hosting six ministries in the Commonwealth nations, which are the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Information and Orientation, the Ministries of Agriculture, the Ministry of Transport, and their central bank governors. Um, this conference will be lasting for one month for each of these ministries and organizations, uh, making it uh, six ministries that is going to be running for six months. Okay, um, Nigeria, as I said, will be hosting um, this, um, this uh, conference. And we as an organization, we provide organic um, products, organic food and organic drinks. And um, when we saw the flyers of this, uh, the advert for this uh, conference, and the theme of the conference is the role of organic food towards nation building and the fight against COVID-19 in reference to the second wave. We as an organic Bristol home, decided and found out that it will be very profitable for us as the only Bristol, organic Bristol in Nigeria. We don't have competitors right now because it is like a monopoly. So we decided um, to apply to feed these ministers and their contingents that will be coming for this conference in Nigeria. So based on the foregoing, we, are, we plan to, um, be, to offer them organic breakfast, organic lunch, and organic dinners and even the in-between meals we're going to be serving them and um, they are all organic canopies and all that so basically it's an organic conference and we are going to be providing organic food the question is investors why not do that since we know it is a sellout already we've sealed the deal all thanks to our Evo CEO and our marketing team um, that got this deal for us. So we are going to be feeding um, the 54 member nations, their ministers and five other delegates coming from these countries, making it six delegates per, con uh, per country. So not to bother you so much, let's just break down, let's just get into the breakdown of the finances because it's the money we are looking for. We as an organization, um, we have funds, but we want to see how we get some more funds 
from our investors to make sure that this project is done and done successfully. So we've come up with, um, with our plan um, and our costing. So we might not bother you to break down what uh, we have in the breakfast. We're going to be using breakfast, but just have it in mind the organic products, even our lunch, our dinner, and our in-between meals. So our breakfast sells at about 18,000 Naira. Our lunch is estimated at 24. Our dinner is at 21,000. And our in-between and snack time is at 10,000 Naira. That's for our sales. Then looking at our direct costs, uh, we have worked on our direct costs and indirect costs. In this, uh, in this uh, project, our direct cost mainly is um, the condiments we're going to be using to get these things ready uh, and some of the equipment we'll be using. Um, some of our direct costs for our breakfast, we have a direct cost of about 6,500 Naira. And looking at that, you see we have a markup of about, before we remove our indirect cost and taxes, uh, we have a markup of about almost 65-70%, uh, which is good for the investor. Um, for our lunch, we have is about 10,000 Naira. For our dinner, we have a direct cost of about 8,000. And for our snack time, um, we have um, a direct cost of... 3,000 Naira. Then moving to our indirect cost. We have our cost of operations um, as my operations managers have said and we have the salaries as our HR have said. Uh, we also have insurances. We want to be sure that while we move our products from point A to point B that everything is well insured. We have the utilities and the permits for the certain things that we want to do. Uh, and then we have the little insur the little um, bank charges here and there that we need to take care of. And then the interest for you, the investor, to know that your interest is well taken care of. And then we talk about the taxes. So just to give you a little breakdown of what we have uh, in our cash flow. Um, since we are serving the same number of um, guests every month in this six months, so our, our spreadsheet is like almost the same thing for all through um, the duration of the project. For you to go far in life, you need to learn to respect those that have been there before you. Because if you respect those that have been there before you, the oil rubs on you and that person will open up to impact upon you. And before you start thinking about diligent, before you start, and even at that, hard work is not even needed for you. Because already, everything I can have given to you. Okay, just a quick one. The 31 rules in the kitchen is going to go a long, long way to help you. Locally, internationally, whatever, nally that you want to call it. Sorry, I'm going to use the raw term of the kitchen. I'm not going to use anything else made. We are all chefs, right? I don't care the position you occupy, whether you're a chef de party, whether you're a commis, whether you're a, a, a toner or a pantry chef, or a sous chef, or a senior sous chef, or executive sous chef, or executive whatever. We are all one. So, number one, kitchen staff and chefs should wear clean uniform, aprons, and hats when handling food. I don't need to dissect it now, isn't it? It's explainable. Number two, uniform and hats must not be worn outside the premises as this might cause contamination that is outside the premises outside the premises you understand what outside the premises means number three should i fly yes kitchen staff must always wear the issued clothes shoe and socks and at any course no slippers or beer food are allowed while walking in the kitchen Kitchen staff, let me paraphrase it. Chefs in the kitchen must always wear the issue clothes, shoes, and socks. And at any curse, no slippers or bare foot are allowed while walking in the kitchen. Kitchen staff must be showered and shaved daily when reporting to work. Number five. 
Chef's hair must be clean and short. And for female, if hair too long to shoulder, it must be tied back of the face. Let me explain because I've seen it happen before. Most guests are very, very crafty. Do you know that? Some guests are very, very crafty. I have seen in a situation where a guest finished eating and pull off this you guys stuff, human hair, and drop it in, inside the plate. To cause catastrophe. But unknown to the guest that while she was doing it, she was under a surveillance cover. CCTV picked her, but she didn't know. So when she raised her eyebrow, they said my food, they said my food. And they said, well, all the chefs in the kitchen, all the ladies in the kitchen, they do cover their hair. Guys don't wear wig. Guys, low cut, they cover their hair. They shave. So we don't know where this is coming from. You guys are Nigerian. And there was a call from the control room. This is what the person did. And she said, no, 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 never. And they took her to the control room. And they played the female. And she couldn't say Jack. So that is, all, that is why they said, when it's too long, take it to the back, pack it very well. Number six. Nails are to be clean and short to avoid any food contamination. The truth of the matter is, let me tell you guys something. As a chef, let's, there's what they call food contamination. Did you believe that? Yes. Must not wear strong perfume or after shave while working in the kitchen. This number eight, I will tell you, I'm a victim to heat. Number eight. I'm a victim to it because I love cologne. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an, an addicted cologne lover. But what I don't do is, if I want to wear the cologne into the kitchen, because I have this, this mindset of, if you go into the kitchen, definitely, no matter what cologne you wear on your jacket, the order of the kitchen will swell you up. And secondly, why I like using cologne is because when you walk in the kitchen, you are all to sweat. But I don't use the ash ones. That's why I said I am a victim of that. So if you ask me, I use cologne. I only use those ash ones. And I can't do without it. Because I'm addicted to it. Not today. So many years back. Number nine. No food and drink consumption in the food preparation area should be allowed. No food and drink consumption in the food preparation area should be allowed. Is it allowed to smoke in the kitchen? No. Yeah. Why? Okay, let me tell you something. In the Western world, there's what they call cigarette and coffee break in the kitchen. All my years in Nigeria, I never knew there was something like that. Until when I traveled out of Nigeria to, to go for it, it, it's something like this in Italy. While we were in our cooking studio, just like this, teaching, taking lectures, the next thing I had, the chef just said, five minutes cigarette and coffee break. <laughs> cigarette, coffee break. I know of coffee break. Cigarette break. <laughs> So I called myself like say I know her. So I followed the train. Oh no, I get, got outside. I saw chefs from other around the world bringing out cigarettes, they light up, they smoke. The coffee machine is there, they are brewing their coffee. I was watching them because I don't do coffee. Do you know what I was thinking? Wow, so there's cigarette and coffee break. So I thought the Yoshi tactically has one. Why is it that? So we'll just do like 45 minutes, they'll say cigarette and coffee break. Say so yes, now you have to go out and you know smoke up, take coffee, you know, to stretch up your nerves, you know, you relax your nerves. It's, it's pretty good for your health. You know, after stretching your mind, say, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> now I lie, I don't know. 
You won't go for your hand. I'm about for you. Number 11, right? Yes. And must be washed thoroughly with soap and water and dried with a paper towel. And must be washed thoroughly with soap and water and dry with a paper towel. Can somebody give me an example of how chefs wash their hands? Oh, stubborn. I don't want to. No. 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 Okay. Down to where? Down to where? Where? You just say here. Yeah. It has a name. Okay. 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 Then. And. Alas. Number nine, right? So nobody wants to travel to Bahamas. Oh. Wow. Avoid touching food with your bare hands when preparing or serving it. Avoid touching food with your bare hands when preparing or serving it. Before I get to the next one, I don't know. I'm a practical example of it. I find it very difficult, even at home, to cook. Because I've become addicted to hand loops. I don't know if you understand what I mean. I've become addicted to hand loops. And even if I want to peel onion, I always want to use hand loops. Yes, I like it like that. Because that is the normal standard as a chef. You don't touch with your bare hands. I was telling somebody, I was asking somebody something today. I told the person, I said, get me a cutting board that I will use for ready to eat food and cut the ready to eat food into cubes. Which board do they use for ready to eat food? Ready to eat food? Green? White is used for dairy, for dairies, grocery or bread. Brown is used for ready to eat food like meat, chicken. And I asked the guy, fix it for me. You know what the guy did? Just like what he said. When I'm wanting green board, no angle, and start talking. And I told him, I said, Mr. Man, respectfully speaking, you are not a trained chef. I can overlook the the the, the concept of you using green board. But the concept of you not wearing Anglo, because a lot and a lot of chefs does not know cutting boards. A lot. We only know the the green one, but there are more to it. Well, number ten, right? Always wear plastic gloves or use clean serving utensils when handling foods. I just said this on a couple of seconds back. Always wear plastic gloves, latex, or use clean serving utensils when handling foods. Number 14. I need to come out of this thing. Do not lick your fingers. Do not lick your fingers while handling or testing food. Shit. Sorry, what is the best way or which which way will you recommend for me if I want to test food while I'm cooking? Yeah. But I want to know if the food 
if the test has gotten to to the as the normal how I want it. What shall I do? I'm using this teaspoon. Now, okay. 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 The way of your testing is to use a disposable spoon. Mm -hmm. you test, it disposes. If you come to our kitchen, we have thousands of disposable spoons. This is our grandmother style of testing. <laughs> is it allowed? No. But most times we do it. If I don't, if I don't used to do it, let me see your hand up. Come on, don't fuck up. Do not blow your nose, cough, or sneeze over food. You really need to pay attention to this. You need this in the course of your journey. Do not blow your nose, cough, or sneeze over food. Can I ask a question? Yes. But eventually you are walking and all, all of a sudden you feel like sneezing. What should you do? Sneeze. What should you do again? What should you do? Unai did it. But nobody will win this week today. <laughs> If any kitchen staff is suffering from vomiting, diarrhea, or other stomach upset, inform your supervisor immediately. If any kitchen staff is suffering from vomiting, diarrhea, or other stomach upset, skin complaints, or curts, inform your supervisor immediately. This is going to be an intensive class. That is why I said don't travel to Bahamas. Can I just, can I switch over a little bit? I want to ask one, two, three questions. Should we? The person responsible for preparing cold food, such as salad, salad dressing, is called what? I'm not going to give you options of answer. I want you to use your brain. Yeah. yeah. The person responsible for preparing sauces, saute food and stew in a section is called what? Chef de saucier. Chef de saucier. That is the origin name for it. So five five. So 45 to go. <laughs> yeah. That'll be you. <laughs> In the course of the teaching, questions will come up. So five five. Any raw food like chicken, meat, pork, etc., must never come into contact with cooked, ready-to-eat food. True or false? Why? I doubt. Is a lie. Any raw food like chicken, meat, pork, etc. must never come into contact with cooked or ready to eat food. It's a lie. It should come because it gives the food more flavor. Oh. Why? If raw meat or raw fish is high in bacteria, good. Why the cooked one has passed through fire? So the whole of them are not supposed to eat. God bless you. Ah. Ten point. <laughs> Number, number 18. Chef should never use raw egg in cook preparation. Chef should never use raw eggs in cook preparation. Okay, where are we? Number 19, right? Yes. Never use the same equipment or working surface for raw and cook ready to eat food without thoroughly cleaning and disinfecting them first. Never use the same equipment or working surface for raw and cook ready to eat food 
without thoroughly cleaning and disinfecting them first. That is where that word comes into play, contamination. Use cutting boards according to their color codes. Use cutting boards according to their color codes. Shall I go on? Use cutting boards according to their color codes. Can I tell you something? <laughs> it's crazy, but then I know that. You know, I have practiced this thing to a point whereby it has become part of me. That most times when I go to, how do they call this place? Or this school to buy chicken. I usually have some hiki hiki with those attendants. And one day I went with somebody to buy chicken. And the call attendant just finished using a board, you know their board, to cut fish for somebody. And I said I made chicken, one kg. And she brought the chicken, she weighed it. And she was about to cut the chicken. I said, no, don't use the same board. My guy said, boy, calm down. You say, they are dead. I said, no, you can't use the same board. The woman was like looking at me. Not be the same board they use. I said, no, you can't. This is unprofessional. The guy said, bros, calm down. If you do where you do, you do professionalism. For a year, anything goes. I told the woman, I said, pack it. Pack it. Party and I paid our life. And while we were going, while we were driving home, and the guy was like talking to me, I told him, I said, listen, what makes any business stand out is you need to send, set a standard for yourself. You don't do what every, everybody does. Set a standard for yourself. I don't need to talk like you, even if I'm close to you. Set a standard. I say, forget in a petty trade. I said, no, I come, I saw, I talk, it's better. So people will come, they will see, they will not talk, they will never return them. I don't know if you... Yes, yes. So, I say this to say what I'm about to say. If you venture into a business, or you already do a business, set a standard for this. Be unique. Let let them know you for something. I have a girl. I first got to know her when I went to their school to lecture. Wef Wefcrest. I don't know if, if any of you know Wefcrest. Mm -hmm. I went to Wefcrest to lecture, and that was where I met them. Oh man, God of mercy! I don't pray for my enemy to go to that school to lecture if you are not if you are not prepared. The old student there, they will train you with questions. So many lots of questions are But after, after the whole thing, this girl happens to come to where I work to do, what do they call it, Intel or something. Do you know what interests me about her today? She set a standard for our business. She's into food supply. If you see what this girl is doing, extremely great when you see when she's preparing her store she videos it you see all the words you see she applies all the terms and condition of cooking when you see such a thing what do you want to do business with such a thing but she knows what she's doing she didn't venture into let me do as many other persons do and when i come i said rose why why are you wasting your time in all this following all this procedure? Not the money you won't make. He said, bros, calm down. I'm setting a standard for myself. And you see this thing where they do? A lot of people, they've been calling me about it. That man, we are coming to learn from you. You use fish for fish, this for this, that for that. You don't mix this. When you're doing your mise en place, you do everything and you pick them one after the other. I say, really? Do you know what she ended up telling me? But why you want to change my perception now? After I, now, you, now, it was the same you that said we should follow due process. So, whenever you find yourself doing, set a standard for yourself. Use cutting board according to their color code. Green 
cutting board vegetables only. Are we there? Yes. Red cutting boards, meat only. Yellow cutting board, chicken only. Blue cutting board, fish only. White cutting boards, diaries only. Brown cutting board, ready to eat food. I'll just let your hands because I've watched several international chefs. If they are working, they don't usually follow this kind of food. They don't follow, yeah. Is it the same thing with us or what? <laughs> It's the same thing. I am one good fan of Food Network. Very good fan. And I am a student, a student of uh, this guy. What is called? This famous chef, Colonel yeah. Ramsey. Yearly, I pay seventy-five dollars to him every year. Seventy-five dollars. On the seventeenth of December, I'll be paying seventy-five dollars because I. I'm on one of his online whatever. Do you know what he told us? Somebody asked this question. He said, what you see on Food Network is what has to do with timing. Because they have a set time. And you need to meet that time. Now, at the time you keep running, you want to work with fish. And you go, carry blue board, finish. You want to work with veg, you, you are looking for green board. You are killing time. But operational wise, you follow those codes. 